I am here with actress Susan Santiago. Susan, how are you? How's life? Thank you. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> anytime, anytime. So I do have to start off with your film, American Nightmare. As we were talking before the interview, it really is crazy what six minutes can do. Talk a little bit about that film. Once again, it was incredible. Well, American Nightmare um, is a short six-minute film, which, by the way, is starting to win awards. It's gotten Best Short Film and an Audience Award at two different festivals. Um, it has to do with the family separations at the border. And it's a, a short uh, film that we, actually, my husband and I decided to uh, create simply because, as you remember, during the summer, we were watching how these family separations were happening, and we were completely appalled and destroyed by the images and the information that was being released. And I basically just said to my beloved, please, we have our art. Why can't we help shift the conversation in this arena? And so basically the film is very powerful. It is quick and it really invites everyone to have empathy and understanding and a desire to help refugees and immigrants find humanitarian solutions to their plight. Yeah, yeah. Well, w once again, it was incredible. I'm really happy I'm going to watch it, and I definitely encourage everyone else to watch it. Uh, yeah, you can see it at www.americannightmarefilm.com. We welcome your comments, and we welcome you seeing it and sharing it with friends and family if, if it speaks to your heart. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely spoke to mine, and, and th this is adding on about the awards. Congratulations on the uh, Downtown LA uh, Film Festival Award. That was just recent. Yes, it is. It's wonderful. And it's, it's wonderful to see the film and, and be with the audience as they're watching it because it's very powerful. And each audience is very different. But there is a silence, <laughs> a silence that hits the, the audience. And then they just feel so deeply moved. They don't know what to say. And then after, you know, we're released and we can do the Q&A, everybody bombards us with their comments of validation and support and uh, how powerful the film affected them. So I am kind of curious a little bit about the behind the scenes aspect of it. So once again, it was short, powerful, but it was six minutes. I'm kind of curious, how long did it take to actually make the entire film? I'm just curious. Well, the idea came to us one morning and two weeks later we were shooting and we shot it all in one day. Now, it was ambitious. It was crazy. Our heart and intent was to help people and affect people in a deep way. So... We just put it out there and people um, showed up, it was ambitiously shot in one day, <laughs> written in three days and, you know, two weeks later we were shooting it. Man, that's, I, I've never heard a story like that, but that's pretty interesting. That's really great what you accomplished in a day. Yep, absolutely. It's crazy, but it can be done. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you were in another really socially uh, relevant film, The Hate You Give, which just, uh, you know, recently came out. That must have been an incredible experience to partake in that. Well, um, I think an actor's dream is to really be able to use their art to have something to say. And I feel extremely blessed to be a part of The Hate You Give. The Hate You Give is an incredible movie. Everybody that I know that has seen it is so deeply moved by it. And I think um, I actually spoke to the director, George Tillman, lately and just thanked him, thanked him for allowing me to be a part of that film and for even my small contribution to it. Um, but it is a beautiful movie. It invites people who are outside of the culture to have understanding and empathy for what is experienced within another community. And he did a brilliant job, which is what we had intended as well with American Nightmares, to not make anybody wrong, but to show you what it's like, to put you in the shoes of other people so that you, with your own heart, can decide and can see for yourself what it's like and ultimately speaking we're all human we're all part of the human race and that's what unites us and makes us all one yeah 100 percent. i completely agree with you so <laughs> so I, I guess what is next for you because you know this year has been incredibly active and busy for you what's next what are some of your goals well you know i think we are trying to gear up for another round of uh, film festivals with American Nightmare, and we're very hopeful that that will be seen and the message will be spread across widely. But I think um, there's no shortage of subjects that's happening right now in the world. You know, you have the mass shootings, the Me Too movement, Black Lives Matter, the LGBTQ issues. Um, you know, uh, so I think our desire is to create more films in that respect, to uh, help awaken humanity and 
provide perspectives that are possibly not shown in everyday media, especially with such a polarized um, culture that we're living in right now. Um, but other than that, my goal is to continue to share who I am <laughs> authentically through work. Um, hopefully somebody will give me another opportunity to do that for them. <laughs> but you never know in this industry because even though I have a large body of work, you know, you always have to show every day, improve yourself again to someone else. So that's the nature of the industry that I work in and I welcome it and I appreciate it and I share my flavor with whoever's out there trying to do good work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, your career, and I'm sure the best is yet to come, of course, you've been in so many different shows and, and movies. Mm -hmm. you, you really are in incredibly accomplished. I guess, what have been some of your uh, you know, most memorable moments, you know, some of your highlights? Oh, gosh. Um, one of my most incredible moments was working on The Shield. The Shield is something that it deeply affected me, and it's it's a violent show, which is not my liking necessarily. In fact, I couldn't watch the series. It's critically acclaimed and everybody was like, you're missing out. I'm like, I can't deal with the violence. And in fact, what I did in that show um, was very violent. I was a victim of uh, potential rape. Didn't get quite executed, but it began. But the reason why that um, series, you know, really affected me is simply because TV is such a fast-paced environment. You're trying to shoot one series in um, one episode in, in, a, in one week. So you don't have the freedom to do take after take after take because you're trying to meet eight hours and you're not trying to go into overtime. So when you get hired as an actor, you show up and do your job and you leave and you show up and do it quickly and effectively. Otherwise, you don't work. Um, but this particular director was one that just wanted to explore. And it was a difficult scene because I was being <laughs> potentially raped. Um, and he was like, do you want to do it again? And I was like, yes. And we did so many takes. I left that day with bruising all around my wrist <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> and pain from that, from that episode. But I was so fulfilled uh, just to be able to do the work and to represent honestly and authentically. And my best friend says to me, you're the only person I know that can cry all day and still come home happy. That's one of them. And then Daddy Daycare uh, oh. was also one that marked me simply because, honestly, working with Steve Zahn and Jalika Houston and uh, Eddie Murphy, and um, it was just like being paid to laugh all day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, somebody's going to find us out and figure out that we are just getting paid to laugh and play. I, I just was so worried that we were going to be fired because <laughs> it was so much fun to be on that set. I cannot believe they're paying me to do this is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. <laughs> so uh, Angelica Houston is one of the yummiest people I have met on set. Um, Did you say yummiest? Good. Yes. I don't know that's, what that means. That's my signature word. It means that everything about you is just incredible and loving and, and open and um, available and accessible. And she was so playful with extras and the crew and everybody, didn't matter who you were, she didn't make a distinction. And it was wonderful to see someone of her caliber still after all these years be so open and available and accessible, you know, and not be tainted by what stardom brings to you. Right, right. Now, what has been your most Bizarre role. I always like asking that question because I know you, you actors have been through s some interesting uh, roles. Gosh, uh, I don't know if I have bizarre roles. Um, I should have had my resume printed out because <laughs> I've done so much I forget what I did. But um, I don't know if I've had any bizarre roles. I mean, I've had roles that teach me a lot of things, um, but bizarre, I, I don't know if I would qualify i haven't been gifted the role of a bizarre role yet so we'll have to talk about that next time <laughs> gotcha gotcha well hopefully i hear about that soon you said there's some roles where you've definitely learned more than others what has been like the most uh, i guess what has been that role where you learned something that you really never did before the most meaningful important role that you've had well i see the whole industry you know i got into this industry 
because I wanted to affect people. I learned to, I was born and raised in Spain. I learned English by watching um, American um, soap operas. That's how I learned to enunciate. I didn't really learn like in school. And so um, I watched a lot of TV and I thought one day I wanna be able to contribute to others what has been given to me through media. Um, but I realized very quickly because Hollywood is such a tough industry that um, that acting became my sort of spiritual path. I'm not a religious person, but I am very spiritual. And I realized that this industry really calls you to question a lot of things about yourself because you're very, it's very superficial. It doesn't validate based on talent. It validates based oftentimes on talent, but oftentimes on other things. And so you be begin to question who you are and if you're any good or have any value or so, every job that i do is a learning experience for me and every job is an opportunity to be to be of service towards other people and so every rejection that i get is also a gift and it's not really you know i've had to learn over the years that it's like going to baskin robbins you know there's 31 flavors and they're all incredibly yummy but today's flavor is dulce de leche do you know what I'm saying? And yours happens to be chocolate chip, but it doesn't make you any less yummy. <laughs> but, you know, the industry doesn't allow you to see that because you think, oh, I did something wrong. And right. so even like auditions to me have been very, a uh, huge learning experience. And everyone is my teacher. Crew people are my teacher. The directors are my teacher. My fellow actors are my teachers. And so I'm always absorbing and, um, and I feel so very fortunate to be able to share some of that. I'm very transparent. I like to share with people what I learn on set each time. Um, it, freedom. I think uh, I worked on three episodes of Longmire, which is a Netflix show, and I was playing a indigenous uh, Native American teacher. And it, a couple things on that set. I learned, first of all, how to work without limited direction because we had several different directors and some of them were very on hands or hands-on that's my English as a second language <laughs> and some of them were not and so I thought okay I don't, I don't know if I'm doing a good job or not but I'm gonna keep going but sometimes as an actor you wait for someone to say good now do this but I was getting nothing no adjustments no direction just keep going and I'm like oh god I hope I'm doing well right. so you learn to trust yourself and you learn to you know, take that in as a gift instead of, you know, as a, a point of insecurity. But also there, that taught me to be free, it taught me to be free and just be who I am. And then let the professionals do their job, like makeup artists. I, I'm horrible at makeup. Let people do their job. I'm, har I'm not the director. I let them direct. If they're seeing something that, that they're not wanting or if they are wanting something that I'm not giving, then I let them tell me. And if not, I trust what I do, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Susan, I think you're incredible. Your film, American Nightmare, is incredible. I encourage, once again, everyone to watch it. The floor is yours. Anyone you'd like to thank, how can people find you on social media? Oh, please. If you go to AmericanNightmareFilm.com, you'll find my social media handles there. You can also find me on SusanSantiago.com. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, although Twitter not as active, but I do try. <laughs> I know we're in a social media uh, world now so I try to do my best to contribute but I'm just thankful for people I'm thankful for people in general who watch my work who who want to see interesting stories and um, and I'm, I'm thankful for the gift and lessons I get from people in general uh, everybody that I see is a learning experience for me as an actor I observe my my job is to observe people and to be able to translate that on camera and so uh, I also appreciate those people that represent me, Denise Fisher, who's my manager, because guess what? If I didn't have them, <laughs> I wouldn't work. <laughs> so if it wasn't for them, you know, I wouldn't get to do what I love. <laughs>